So it's after eight this morning. It took us from uh, to, to from the time we got here to just now to get tracked up here. It's about a uh, we're two miles in here, and this is this is about almost a halfway point right here. So we're come back to get started on this on this track right here, and. The problem down there was is the road. Uh, we couldn't get on that road down there across that middle bridge. So what we did was is we uh, we cut a new trail. We just made a trail through the woods. Derek did and worked our way uh, worked our way out. Get back up here. So it took a little while to cut a trail. It's probably 900 feet or so that he had to cut to get back toward the bridge there to keep us out of the road. Cause the road was just that wet. Cause we didn't want to tear that road up. We'd have drove on that road and it would have tore that road all to heck. So we're about to tear into this right here and get going and uh, see what we can do right here. It'll take Derek a few minutes to cut this spot where we can come in here. He's kind of got to open it up. So he goes, goes in there a little ways and then he'll start working his way back and go that way and then come back this way and get all these trees over here. Give us some room to work. See that chunk that thing through? Off that disc. That's 50 yards it throwed that thing right there. A good 50 yards from him. That machine is so daggone strong. Feel the ground shake right here when that tree hit the ground.
if you'll notice the videos that I filmed over the of the Tiger Cat track cutter the last month or so you hear the track squeaking really bad on us because it's so dry as soon as we get this rain kind of west the ground you don't hear the track squeaking anymore just every now and then you'll hear a squeak whatsoever man mm -mm -mm. those are trees you hate to see come up in a drag right there's a processor too bad today all in all all things considered uh, had we need the first load loaded till after nine this morning I think ended up loading 16 so maybe tomorrow will be a be a better day of course we got all we got all week to run 
and Saturday too. And uh, some all order to work on out all right there. We got the 5075E smoked off, just unhooked the disc. About to put the forks on. So I gotta get this out of my truck here. We got a whole pallet of uh, corn. We're gonna put it, I'm gonna show fork it, put it inside my big shop over there and uh, store it. And I'll start putting out corn, fill all the feeders up this weekend and get that done. And uh, we'll be good to go. So today's load count numbers is, I uh, we'll ended up loading 28 today. So we had a good day. I had that done by three o'clock. I picked up a huge box of caps right here. Embroidered that are going to the uh, Sunbelt Ag Expo next week. Me and Jill, we're gonna take everything that I got with us. Uh, I've got that many more caps inside the house too. And then I'm about to pick up, I'm gonna meet at seven o'clock tonight. I have a massive short shirt order that I'm picking up too, along with all the other shirts that we got. So Jill and I are ramping up, getting ready for that. So I'm gonna take y'all along where we can uh, get this corn unloaded here real quick. Now you hear Tater over there barking. He serenades me quite a lot. I don't let him out when I'm doing this kind of stuff like this right here because he really gets in the way. I have about run over him several times while I'm doing stuff like this with the tractor and all, and it's just not worth it for me to have that worry to deal with. And uh, so I just leave him in the pen for now until I get through moving around. So that's 2,500 pounds right there. It's uh, 2,000 2, pounds of corn and then there's 10 other bags on there. A 5075E is uh, it's pretty dang tough. It's a perfect, perfect tractor for, uh, for my needs. So let's go put it in the shop. <laughs> 